And the doctor said, frankly, if you don't lose this weight, what? I could die. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty big eye opener, huh? Hello, hello, and welcome to Braving It with Tracy Renee, where stories of strength and inspiration are going to help you discover your brave. Let's go. Welcome to Braving It with Tracy Renee, and today I have the honor of bringing you a guest today who is someone I get to share with you who just happens to be my husband, hey Brian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so he is one of the bravest men that I know. And I want you to hear his story. Uh, I've heard it. It's one of the things that drew me to him and attracted me to him at the very beginning. So I get to share with you him. So, Brian, hello. Hi. <laughs> so, you don't make me cry. <laughs> Already? Yeah. <laughs> We're just going to have a casual conversation mm. here. We're inviting you into our home right now just to share a little bit about him, and what he's been through, and what he's going to go through. So let's start with you have a brave act coming up next year we're going to talk about that in a minute but i want to go back okay to when you first discovered your health problems what were they and when did you find those out oh wow it had to be probably around 2009 2010 mm -hmm. and i had a lump that i kind of ignored for i don't know six months or so mm -hmm. And it was probably the latter 2010. And I ended up having testicular cancer. Okay. And so, uh, as all guys do, oh, it'll go away. It's, it's nothing, it'll shrink. And at one point in the last three or four months, um, right after I went to the doctor, it tripled in size. Oh. And wow. so, I knew the urgency then to take care of it. Mm hmm. Yeah, so that was about 2010. Okay. Yeah. So then you had. Uh, what do you call that? What's that? The removal. Uh, orchiectomy is the official name okay. of it. But I had one of my boys removed, if okay. I can say okay. that. Okay, right. right. All right, so you had an orchiectomy. Yeah, right. And then recovered from that. But then what happened? So um, after the, the surgery, going for a checkup, and I was clean except for an elevated lymph node in my abdomen. And they said that was pretty normal. It wasn't very much. So we just watched it. And a year later, I couldn't go to the bathroom. Mm. And I was scheduled for my yearly CAT scan, you know, from having cancer. And so I went in a few days early, I had an opening. And I had the scan and they said, you know, we'll call you usually tomorrow or whatever, give you the results. And they called within 15 minutes. Mm. Mm. Wow. I know, you're getting emotional because this is tough. I mean, yeah. It was a lot. So they called you within 15 minutes to tell you right. what? So they told me, uh, well, the nurse called and goes, you know, um, doctor's going to call you in about 10 minutes. She hung up, not 30 seconds later, he called mm. and said, you need to go to the ER. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> Don't be sorry. No, so. It, it, so it became a very uh, immediate, urgent matter, which kind of shocked me and um, so we ended up going up to Harborview from Federal Way and um, they admitted me then the do they found out or oh, I waited in the, w the emergency room for about three hours and they they admitted me then they decided not to admit me because the doctor that was in charge of the chemotherapy wasn't there for that weekend okay so they said just come back on Monday and so they sent me home and this was on a, a Friday or Saturday. Right. And so when I went back in Monday, they started inpatient chemotherapy right away to shrink it down. To shrink what down? You haven't so told us a, what they I, found. I had a tumor in my abdomen, that lymph node that was elevated, that wasn't a big deal, it became this uh, about six and a half inches in diameter. And wow. I was pressing on my uh, intestine, mm. as well as one of the lines to my kidney, so they're worried about kidney failure. Wow at that point. Wow. So that's why it's five days of chemotherapy right away. Okay. Yeah. So then somewhere thereabouts you they discovered something else. Well I I went there and had uh, chemotherapy and they wanted to shrink it down so over the next 60 days I had 21 treatments. Okay. Wow. 
so the, the process was five days in a row. Well, then it was inpatient. Then after that, the others were all outpatient. And so it's five days in a row, then the following two Mondays. Mm -hmm. And they used a, a new drug, an aggressive drug, for those seven treatments. Mm -hmm. Then I repeat that three times. Mm -hmm. So 21 treatments in seven in 30 or 60 days. So once they shrunk it down, they waited six months. But during that time, they also found a spot in my thyroid. So they couldn't do anything about it because they wanted my body to recover. So they waited six months. I had a major surgery. I was about a five and a half hour surgery. It opened me up, 52 staples, removed the residual. Then another six months after that, they removed my thyroid. Okay. And I've been, after that, that thyroid remov removal, I've been cancer free ever since. Okay. So it was about 2014 when all that happened. Wow. Okay, yeah. so you've been through more than most people right. ever in the course of two, about two years. Yeah. Something like that, right? Yeah. I mean, the, the cancer was discovered in 2000, the 11. original 11. And then well, I knew ahead of time, but I, you know, yeah. I, I was being stubborn. Okay. Yeah. All right. As you can see, he's getting emotional, and this is very, a very hard thing to do. I'm not going to stereotype, but most men typically don't share real vulnerable things like this. So, Brian, why do you feel it's important to share this story? Before we go any further, why do you think it's important to share? Well, there's something I learned while going through the inpatient chemo mm -hmm. therapy. In fact, day two around, they brought around of uh, med students and wanted to see if they could poke and prod and and asked me questions. I said, sure, and go ahead. And, and there's something that came to me, I, I know, um, as in, our, in my prayers, God spoke to me, he said, you need to talk to these guys. Mm. And so I thought, what's the, the most impactful thing I could tell them? And it was all about patient care. Because mm. I almost remember word for word what I told them. And a lot of it was, you know, people are scared. People have no idea what's going on. They don't get all the facts or they're in denial or whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, my word to the, the students were, you know, I know probably two thirds of you won't make it to be a doctor. That's just the facts. Mm -hmm. But whatever you do, just remember, these are people. Mm -hmm. And everybody's got, you know, in my opinion, Every um, soul is of great worth, and people are scared and have no idea. I think sometimes in the medical profession, you don't get treated that way. You get treated coldly. Mm -hmm. And so I think that was, you know, to help and advocate for other people, I think, became very strong in me then. Yeah. Yeah. So and it's important to, to share, to be vulnerable, to, to go through this process. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, I appreciate it. I know you're vulnerable Absolutely. with me, but it's another thing to share it with the world. So thank right, you. Right. Okay. So after you had the 52 staples, they removed mm. the cancer from your abdomen. Yeah. Um, it leads us up to where you are in your life today. Tell yeah. us what happened after that. Well, after that, yeah, I, I'd gone through a divorce at the time. Um, about th two, three years afterwards, it was finalized and went on my own. And, and um, you know, as I was healing from the surgery, uh, I felt a pinch in my abdomen. And it pro progressively got worse over the years. And so what happened, I, um, it became a hernia. Mm -hmm. But it was an incisional hernia, not one little poking through. The incision underneath and the muscle fibers came apart to where the incision was. It opened up to like a six inch gap. Mm. And so my intestines started poking through. And to this day, now we know after more scans, about two thirds of my intestines are sticking out of my abdomen wall. And it's, it's becoming a problem. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to ask you what the doctor asked you when we went to get your, your checkup just recently. The hernia surgeon asked you, why didn't you fix it back then when you felt the pinch and kind of saw things happen? You know, I just, a typical, I don't know if it's typical for a guy, but I'm sure it is. It'll get better or, you know, it's not that bad. I can work through it. I, I work a physical labor job and I continue to do it. And I'm, I'm sure they don't understand how I can do that. 
mm-hmm. uh, and coach football, but I I just keep going forward. And just to me, it, it just seems like it's something I have to deal with mm-hmm. and move on. And so I got to provide for a living, especially with the new family now and, and myself. And after the divorce, I thought I'll do whatever it takes just to keep keep plugging away. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's very admirable of you. It really is. Very brave and courageous. <laughs> um, but what made you change your mind uh, recently to actually pursue this and ultimately take care of it, which we'll talk about in a minute? Well, I already knew it had to be taken care of. Mm-hmm. I just put it off and put it off and put it off. And, and, and after a while, you don't realize how bad it's getting. Mm-hmm. You just think it's it's a big deal. but. I had some heart flutters. Um, I started getting high blood pressure, uh, getting married. All Wait, sorts, now that did not cause also, the high blood no, pressure. Let's just sorts, be clear. <laughs> all sorts of things were going on, <laughs> and you know, with um, being intimate, my stomach gets in the way. Mm-hmm. Um, I get tired. It puts a stress on my body, and um, you know, we had you and I had some things to where you got really worried. And for a good reason, mm-hmm. my my blood pressure was way sky high, and I thought I guess I could t- start taking care of myself. Yeah. And uh, this is so I went six months trying to find the right doctor, round and round, from my provider to a referral to the Cancer Care Alliance to back to my doctor for about six months before we found the right person. Yeah, right doctor, and that was yeah. definitely a godsend for yeah. sure. Yeah. So yeah. don't give up on that if you're in that process. Let's talk about when the first pinch, the little, mm-hmm. the first tweak, when it actually happened. How much did you weigh at that point? I weighed um, probably about 310. Okay. 305. 305 okay. pounds, yeah. Okay. So then... About, yeah, 310 pounds, yeah. But then you gained... A lot of weight. Okay. What was your highest uh, weight? Uh, 365 pounds. Wow. Yeah. Okay. But at that point, you have this thing happening. Right. But you couldn't really notice it. Because I was heavy, yeah. Because it was kind of covered with the extra. Yeah I, I, yeah, I just didn't realize how much it was coming right. out. Right. Right. Until? Until I started losing weight. Yeah. And get in shape. And, and you know, I, I my job, I worked before I met you, was at a lumber yard. And so I lost 50 pounds in one summer. Mm-hmm. And then it started becoming really noticeable. Yeah. And I met you, and um, now in the last couple months, I've lost another 20 pounds and since our wedding. Yeah. And so it, it's, it's becoming very, like, yeah. bad noticeable. Yeah. 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 Um, that was one of the things the doctor had said mm-hmm. in order to get this surgery. So... He's going to have the surgery January 13th to repair the hernia, but the doctor said, what, what did you need to do before that happened? Uh, uh, change my eating habits, lose weight, get healthier. Um, you know, uh, in the instructions it says five to 10% of my body weight. Mm-hmm. So in my terms, that was 16 to 31 pounds or 32 pounds. Mm-hmm. And so um, that was a month ago. Mm-hmm. And you've lost. I've lost since that month twenty pounds. Yeah. And twenty five since, or about twenty three since our wedding. Yeah. That's uh, two amazing. months ago. It's so amazing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah good job. Yeah. And the doctor said, frankly, if you don't lose this weight, what? I could die. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty big eye opener, huh? Yeah. For the people out there that are listening who may know something's off with their body or they have a lump that they are ignoring or right. y- anything like that. What What's the advice you'd give them? Just just go in. <laughs> I mean, have it looked at. Mm-hmm. Don't wait. Yeah. Don't uh, think you got this because we all need help. Mm-hmm. We, can't, we can't, none of us can live or do this life alone. Mm-hmm. And so we always, we always need somebody. If you're afraid to ask, ask friend for help or your spouse or whoever. Yeah. Yeah. So one of the things that drew me to you at the very beginning was your strength and your bravery. 
The other thing was, when I met you and found out you had gone through all of this stuff, I could not believe how it didn't affect you. Like, I know people that have gone through m a lot of things in their life, mm -hmm. devastating things, and y you may be able to notice. I, I don't know how to explain it, but yeah. for you, you seemed so positive and optimistic or whatever. Yeah. So where does that come from? I think from God. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've got a big heart. Yeah, and I I actually love people. Mm -hmm. I, I hey, don't get me wrong. I'm not perfect. I've always done the right things. I've made bad decisions in my life, mm -hmm. hurt people, been hurt. Mm -hmm. But I I always have loved people, and it just and I always try to put on a brave face. Right, I think that's that's I think that where it comes from just having grit saying hey it's got to get done i don't care how much pain i'm going through let's get her done right and it can be detrimental too as we've seen right yeah. that's where i'm at now it can be detrimental so it's it's one of those things you have to balance it and i wasn't in balance right. yeah i kind of uh just went uh, just kept going non-stop without even thinking about it mm -hmm. but uh i needed to slow down and take care of it yeah. Yeah. So I know that you said God is what's helping you get through this. How, mm. when you when you look into January, getting this major surgery, and then the recovery after, how is He going to play a role in that? I think there's there's a purpose why I'm here. There's a reason. You know, what we didn't talk about, or there's much more to talk about, but uh, it can be another time. There's so much more, tw almost twice as much has happened, not just what we talked about, right. in an eight year period. And there's a reason I'm alive. There's a reason I'm here. And, you know, there's been really drastic circumstances where I've actually felt and heard him. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, but uh, <laughs> it's just overwhelming. That uh, there's somebody out there that's got me. Not just my wife, but our creator that has got my back. And so there's some purpose why I'm here that I'm still working on finding out. Mm -hmm. That's great. Yeah. So the surgery yeah. is scheduled for January 13th. And Friday the 13th. Yeah, right? No, we don't, we don't say that. <laughs> we don't believe in that. This is major. Yeah. This is major. So the reality is you needed to lose the weight mm -hmm. because there has to be room to put your insides mm -hmm. that are outside back in. back in. Right. Yeah. And the doctor says, you don't make room. And I try to put those back in. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. Right. Right. How do you feel? about this upcoming surgery, knowing that? Boy, that's a big question. There's a lot of feelings. Mm -hmm. There's um, a little bit of fear, right? Mm -hmm. There's uh, excitement, anticipation, can't wait. Let's get this done. I'm a, I'm, I'm a okay, let's do it type guy. Just get her done, right? Mm -hmm. And But there's always... That apprehension, you know, it's, it's a six to eight hour surgery, yeah. which we haven't said. It's it's a it's a major thing. Yeah. My first surgery was about five and a half hours, and so this is almost you know twenty percent more, thirty percent more, and so it, I worry about worry about my family. I think because I don't, I don't want them to worry. I don't want you to worry. Mm -hmm. Because I'll be okay. But what goes on when I'm asleep and not there, I'm sure is just, I don't know if heartbreaking's the word, mm -hmm. but fearful. Yeah. Yeah. But. We've got this. God's got this, and I'll be okay. 
it's just a lot to go through. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And I do appreciate you being so vulnerable. And uh, what you know and what you guys may not know is that I have a huge faith in Jesus, too. And, and I know he's got, he's got you, he's got us, he's got right. this whole thing. And he will be with me when you're asleep. Right. So you don't have to worry right. about me, you right. know. Thank you. Absolutely. For sharing. And th we would love for you to join our journey, Brian's journey. Um, and we're going to create a, a space for you to follow our, his journey. I say our journey. It's our journey. It's our, it's journey. our journey. Absolutely. <laughs> but it's, it's your huge, huge. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's huge for you. I'm just along for the ride and to encourage you. But um, we're going to share a link where you can follow uh, all along the way and his recovery and everything, progress to send him well wishes and prayers. And we just thank you for this time. And I'm so proud of you. I think the biggest thing is. We can be brave all we want. You know, my, my podcast is called Braving It. But you know what? Sometimes there is fear that creeps in. You know, we are human, but we just got to know what to do with it right. and trust and have a faith that gets us through. So one last thing you want to say, everybody, before we leave. I think it's just, um, you know, anytime, I, don't be afraid. You, you try to be brave, like you're saying. Don't be afraid to be vulnerable. Yeah, I once talked to a guy and I said, vulnerability, you've got to be vulnerable. Otherwise, you just are closed off your whole life. He goes, well, vulnerab vulnerability is weak. No, vulnerability is a strength. It's, it's a way to communicate, open communication, and, and have a partnership no matter who it's with. I think that's the most important thing through this whole process. All right. Yeah. So, so be vulnerable. You heard it from Brian. <laughs> All right, so we will see you next time for part two. And thank you again thank for you joining guys. us. Thank you for tuning in to Braving It with me, Tracy Renee. My hope is that by hearing other stories of Brave, it will help propel you forward into doing the same thing. If you've enjoyed this episode, I hope you will follow and subscribe. Until then, remember, brave begets brave. The more you step out in courage, the more courage you will find.